Welcome to the winter series. And uh, yeah, nothing's changed. We're into a fish. Uh, and we've ditched bones as well, because he's rubbish. But now we've got one on. This time we're fishing at my lake, Acorn Fishery, and it's absolutely freezing. Right, let's try that again. Welcome to the DNA Base Winter Series. And uh, yeah, nothing's changed. We've just caught a fish. Um, Lee's literally been here probably 20 minutes. Uh, and I got down like this morning, chucked the rods out, caught a couple straight away. And uh, yeah, Lee's just literally getting his gear out of the van and that, and then this rod's gone. And yeah, we just sat there filming it. it looked nice, the sun coming up defrosting everything it was absolutely frozen every all the grass and the huts and everything were frozen solid this morning and I, I generally I thought it was going to be a struggle for a bite to be fair the air pressure at the minute is like a thousand and forty eight or something stupid like that it's absolutely sky high so I've just chucked the rigs like basically up on the shelves sort of high up in the water I've seen a couple of fish show this morning um, hey up. I've seen a couple of fish show this morning and it looks like they're just adjusting their swim bladder whether they're just coming up off the bottom um like last week the air pressure was like 984 i think the lowest which is obviously really really low and the weather has been absolutely bang on it's been like 12 13 degrees southwest of these big winds low air pressures uh until i want to go fishing and it is now freezing cold and the air pressure is like through the roof so yeah, I thought it was going to be a struggle to get a bite, but I've actually caught three already this morning, which is the bonus. Um, yeah, so without further ado, we'll get this one out and we'll have a look at her. Look at that little bad boy. Yeah, what lovely fish. This is the fish that you see me playing in. Um, yeah, I thought we'd get rid of this one out of the net quickly. Um, but yeah, what lovely carp. I know which fish it is. Uh, it's normally around sort of like 20 odd pound. So I'm not gonna bother weighing it or anything. But um, yeah, what a lovely, lovely fish. Especially on a morning like this. Really thought we were gonna struggle for a bite and we've had three already. Uh, so yeah, perfect, it's, it's going well. And I uh, wish Bones was here to help me out, but they were to be seen. So, but I have got to, uh, I have got to give me a little kiss and a cuddle later. He got me a couple of tickets for something that I've been, been after. So, uh, yeah, can't give him too much stick on this session. But yeah, this fish I caught on a, um, a little mini crayfish barrel, a little hooker, and sort of this, this session really will be just nicking the odd bite, fishing to like little features. And uh, yeah, we'll have a look at all that anyway, but what we'll do is we'll get this one back. We'll have a quick look at the other two, slide them back as well. And then, uh, yeah, we're on the way. Happy days. I'll, have, I'll have, just pick it up and see the other side as well. It's equally as nice as this side. There you go, there's the other side. Equally as nice. What a lovely fish. 
but then I am a little bit biased, don't I, with my own lake. So, let's get my little baby back. So the lake that we're fishing in this winter series is uh, it's my place, Acorn Carp Fishery, down in south, the southwest in Somerset. Um, a little bit about the venue, there's like 12 odd pegs, a few little cabins. Um, the, it's like a clay lake, uh, the water can be fairly coloured. And there's probably around, well, I know there, there's around 380 fish um, with nearly a dozen 30s and I think there's 100, nearly 110 fish over 20 pound. So yeah, it's a good head of fish. Um, I've not done a session like how we're going to fish this, you know, this session. I've not fished, I mean, I've done one night last year. I think I've done two nights the year before. Uh, so other than like nicking the odd fish off the top um, or out the edge, sort of like in the summer months, I don't actually fish it that much. Um, so like it's going to be quite interesting to actually do, a, you know, a couple of nights proper fishing, like where I'm in the peg the whole time. Um, you know, even the nights that I've done before, I was just fishing literally an overnight after work, not actually fishing like a day, a night and a day. So yeah, so it's going to be quite interesting for me and like actually quite nice to um, chill out and actually fish my own lake for a change rather than carting halfway around the country to uh, go fish everywhere else. Um, and fingers crossed, like, I mean, recently I've put in a couple of new 30 pounders um, and they're absolute corkers. So I'd love to, you know, I'd love to catch one of those. And yeah, I'm in peg 12 at the moment and it's quite like, you know, it's a decent peg. You get a fair chunk of water. Um, there's a nice reed bed to fish to, which you'll see. Um, and there's a decent margin as well. And earlier in the year, we actually drained the lake down and desilted the fishery. And so I know like a couple of the spots and they, you know, from when I was like grading them off with a digger, desilting it, they look absolutely mint. So it'd be nice to see that, you know, if they produce as well as I think they would. And uh, yeah, so we'll just see how it goes. The way I'm going to approach the swim is one rod down to the left, there's like a little tree and a few reeds in the bay. Um, I'm going to have one rod down there and I've just got a little mini crayfish barrel with half a fruity licious pop up on the top. And I'm going to put down there um, a few eight mil switch boilies. On the hook I have nicked a uh, little mesh bag and um, crayfish mini mix and put some of the matching bait soak over the top as well. And then I just rolled that in the, uh, in the actual the crayfish bag mix, just a bit of smell everywhere, it doesn't hurt. Like, Yeah, so the D-Rigs, um, I've put those on basically just because I think it's going to be quite hard to get a bite um, or they're not going to be like, you know, they ain't going to be crawling up the bank. So I just want a rig that's always fishing. Um, but unlike when we went to Farlow's and we were fishing up against the island, there's like loads of leaves and twigs and stuff under the, under the um, branches you know the canopy of the island here like I've just desilted the lake so there's not really any need for me to fish a pop-up so I'm just gonna have a d-rig and it's gonna sit down nicely like a wafter just on the bottom uh, I know that the lake is very clean on the bottom there's no silt whatsoever because I dug it all out in the spring um, yeah so I'm just gonna fish on the bottom like where my where my free bait is yeah so that's the one rod down to the left and then I've got two rods out to the main island just in front of a reed bed. And like same again, I'm going to introduce just a few eight millers, scattering of free offerings. And over the top, I'm going to fish a bright hook bait to start with. Um, I'll probably start on like a PB hook bait because they're just my favourite. I love them. Um, 
yeah, so I'm just going to sink, sink a 12 mil pop up with the weight of the hook, decent size hook. Uh, and again, I'm just going to nick on a bag of mini crayfish mix and just put some matching bakes out on the bag as well. And hopefully that should be, well, it's already caught me a few fish anyway, so I can't see why it wouldn't carry on. Um, yeah, so that's that. And that's how we're going to start the session. And if anything changes, we shall show you that no problem. Yeah, well, with the uh, with the air pressure getting as horrendous as it is, I mean, it's like a thousand and fifty at the moment, which is absolute garbage. Um, I've had a bit of a sort of change of art. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flick a little zig out. I mean, it's bright, it's sunny, it's flat. Like we're not seeing any, like no fizzing, no sh uh, fish showing anywhere. Um, so yes, yeyeah, so I'm going to flick a little zig out. Now I've got a little trick that. I, you know, I've got it from my match fishing days. I used to fish up at a place called Larford and um, it's like 12, 14 foot deep. And I used to use a tiny little quiver tip rod with braid on. And uh, just at the start of the match, I just flick a little bomb out and keep going out like every sort of like four or five meters at a time and just keep flicking out. And eventually like what you do is you chuck it out and as the lead's going down, you'd feel it like clatter over a few of the, few of the carp that were sat off the bottom. And I've had a little go here and I've actually hit a couple of fish um, so what I do is just, it's brilliant on these little lakes. It doesn't work all the time, but you can flick it out past where you want to fish so it doesn't disturb the water. And all you do is you just literally flick the lead across the bottom and uh, every now and again, you'll just bump into a fish. And I've, I've actually, I've hit two fish, but it feels like they're well off the bottom. Um, and it's like six, seven foot deep. So I'm just going to put a little sort of two and three quarter, maybe a three foot zig on. Um, and I'm going to flick that out for a couple of hours just to see what happens. Uh, I have left two two rods on the bottom over by the reeds. I'm only going to do it on one rod. Um, but this, you know, it's just a little thing that I try now and again. Like I said, it doesn't work all the time, but sometimes, I mean, you've all probably seen like photos, aerial shots of carp all balled up in the winter in the middle of lakes up on the surface. And, you know, this is great for coloured lakes like this where you can't see the fish. Um, you can flick it out and you can, you know, wind it in. It's dead quiet. There's not a lot of disturbance. You know, if you do find a fish doing it, um, you've just got to gauge roughly whereabouts in the peg that you've done that, how far out and in line with whatever you've cast towards. And then I don't like clip it up or anything. I just literally flick my, uh, flick my zig to that general area that I've, you know, that I've hit that fish. Because normally when they're off the bottom, there's where you find one, there's normally like, you know, a couple, they don't, they're very rarely on their own. Um, I actually uh, fished a session on Oxleys, and obviously we were using bigger rods then, but you know, like uh, spod rod and marker rod, um, and we were chucking out to the middle, and where it's deep there, you could literally feel it clattering off the backs of the fish. Even with the mono rig, when you were chucking the chucking the actual zig out, you could feel them. And like um, me and Tom, we managed like a hundred odd bites in a weekend when it was actually snowing. Um, so it's a, you know, it is quite an effective little tactic to. Uh, you know, to locate a few fish. I mean, the actual setup is just one of my little skimmer fishing rods. Just got a little reel, um, little braided main line. You wouldn't really feel anything with mono, so it has to be braid. Um, no different to a marker setup if you were, you know, like a proper carp setup. Um, little ounce bomb, just something, just enough to get out there. You don't want like a big lead crashing in. You just want to flick a little tiny little lead out and just have a feel about. 
and uh, you'll know like it's hard to describe like like Mozzo was watching me do it. he's like let's have a go then so like he's flicked a, he's flicked a uh flicked out with this and he's felt one literally straight away and like when you feel it it's literally like bang like you feel one so you know it's dead obvious when it's official or not yeah it's just a nice little delicate setup and something well worth a try Right, so uh, in the last video where we were at Farlow's, I was using um, an elastic marker on my reel, on my line, and we've had a few questions come in about that, about you know what it is, how you do it, and all that. So basically, all it all it is is to stop me wrapping up all the time, you know, after you get a fish or every time you want to recast. Um, we're just going to tie the elastic marker on now, and then I ain't got to bother keep wrapping up and all that and we'll show you exa exactly how to tie it on. So literally you just plonk your lead next to one of your sticks, around you go so many times. I'm fishing 10 and 3 quarters at the moment, so that's 2, 3, 10 and 3 quarters. That's it. Pop your line in your line clip. Lay your reel on the floor, and I've just got some size two pole elastic. I use pole elastic and not marker braid, it's just better. You don't get that horrible clunky knot. Just take a little two, three inch piece, just literally parallel to your main line, wrap it around two of your fingers. It's a bit like a grinner knot on the line. Round four times. Pull it tight, snip off the ends, and that's it. Yeah, so like, like basically the benefits of having this elastic marker are that you can, well, you can just use it for various things. Like I use it to make sure, like, if you're open water fishing in deep water, you know that where your elastic ends up, so make sure you know you're right on the spot, especially if you're in a big side wind. Um, and, like, fishing up against islands, like, like we are on this session, you can just pop it in a clip and you know that it's bang on if you're just doing a recast. Um, but one of the main things that I like to do is when I hook a fish, as I'm playing the fish in, or once it's taken a bit of line obviously on the take, when I'm playing the fish back in, I'll just clip it up on the way in. Um, obviously you've got to get used to doing that because you wouldn't want to put it in the clip and then the fish go on a mad run and snap you off on the line clip. So like that's just something that comes of experience. Um, but rather than wrap your rod up, if you do catch a fish and you're not, you know, you don't want to wrap it up, you can just flick the lead out past where you're fishing or like to the side of where you're fishing so you don't spook any fish. You'll hear this elastic marker come out through the rings of the rod and you just literally trap the line, wind it back to your, to your marker, pop it in a clip, wind it in, put your rig on and chuck your rig straight back out. It's like, it's perfect, just saves a bit of time Saves a bit of faffing about, um, and yeah, it's just it's just something I've always done, and it works really, really well.
Well, that was absolutely bolted last night. I think over the last probably 36 hours, um, the actual temperatures dropped nearly 16 degrees. It was like 13 degrees here a couple of days ago, and it is now, well, it was minus four this morning when we just woke up. Yeah, it's freezing. Obviously, we haven't had a bite last night. Um, I've been awake. I've just been looking out. I've seen a fish roll up to the left, and I've seen two fish roll right over there in the far corner. Um, so I don't really know what I'm going to do yet. I'm going to sit out here until, you know, until we until bite time, the same time as yesterday, when I caught them fish. And if nothing happens, then I think a move might be on the cards. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Like the only, with the weather getting so cold, uh, like not so many people have turned up fishing and the lake's, the lake's fairly quiet now. And um, I think like, particularly on little small waters like this, I think they can just move off you. Like, you know, it doesn't matter how quiet you are, um, I just think they, they just know, you know, they get fished for a lot. And I, I think, yeah, I think possibly they might have just shied off and just sat over the other side. Like That is probably the warmest part of the lake over there as well. The sun is on it all day and with it being bright today, I'm going to keep an eye on it. And if I see any more activity over there and nothing here, then I'm probably definitely going to move. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll get the rods in, a couple of little fresh rigs and that, zip them back out you know ready for ready for the time that i had the bites yesterday and ju yeah just see what happens just freshen it all up hopefully you know hopefully we get another bite so we're just gonna have a quick look at um three different sort of rig and bait presentations that i'd use for fishing you know fishing here at acorn um they're all pretty simple the first one is just a trusty little whittle down pop-up just to sit up off the bottom. Um, I might change the colour of this hook bait, just depends on the time of year and what I'm doing. Um, but I do love a yellow hook bait. It's perfect. But, um, the rules on here now are uh, boilie only as feed that you bring with you. You can get maize and pellets from the shop. Um, you can fish what you like in a PVA bag or on the hook. Um, but I find with the amount of boilie going in here now, that it's best, you know, just to fish a free offering over, you know, you can catapult boilies over the top. So that would be, if I was catapulting boilies as loose feed and fishing a rig over the top, this would be the rig for that. Perfect, just a little bright hook bait just to sit out amongst your free offerings. And then I've got a little uncoated hook length, that's just a supple hook length. Now, this, there's three islands on this lake with like little marginal shelves and uh, bits and pieces. And sort of when the weather's just warming up in the spring, you can actually catch them by lowering a rig in off the actual main island, real tight to the bank. And this is perfect for that. Um, you can change what you want in the bag. Um, but for nicking a bite off the island, that is perfect. You can put that on, you know, and it doesn't have to, uh, you can put it in right next to the bank. That'll melt and it's just a mouthful for a bite off the island. And then just another open water tactic is just a D-rig. You know, it's dead, they're dead simple rigs that just, they're always fishing, you know, if anything knocks it or picks it up and drops it or, you know, like a little fish or it's always resetting, they're always fishing. And that's just a little PVA bag of pellets and a little bright topper and you can like i say all these rigs you can change to suit you know i might not always fish these hook baits um i always you know just depends on your situation it could be a pb pop-up it could be just a 15 mil s7 out the bag in the spring you know when they're having it and the water warms up i just have to change that to suit that's just uh that's just how it is but yeah three dead simple presentations the bottom in this lake now you know now we've desilted is really clean so there's no need for sort of any like savage pop-up rigs or anything like that. You can get away with using nice little balance rigs that sit on the bottom and it's perfect. Really it's nice both sides, absolutely. Ooh, kicking off. Ready. Do you want me to talk or not? Top tip, tippity tip. Top tip whilst we're blanking our ass off. 
Mm. Check the air pressure. Yeah. It's flat. We've not seen nothing. So what we're we saying now? January, man, it's cold. He's like one of them. I don't know. I bet I eat more than you every year. Like a smackhead, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get my figure for. Uh... So yeah, one of the perks. Yeah, no, one of the perks. You didn't stop them bacon rolls. From I'm trying to talk to this camera, <laughs> mate. Shut, shut up! Shut up! up. <laughs> and a bit of garlic bread, James? I do. Oh, yeah, just take the best bit, innit? <laughs> nice bit of goulash. Yeah, we've we finished with bones now. We've got new big team. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like. Yeah, want to put anything in there, James? Come on, James, put two pence in. Oh, I just want him to do it all again. Why? Because I forgot to press record. Shut up. I'm joking. Nah. <laughs> well, I put a good old shift in last night. Um, went really cold really quick uh, last night. Everything froze. And if I'm honest, I wasn't really expecting a bite anyway. Um, I'd done a hot water bottle, jumped into my bed and uh, crawled out my pit this morning. Um, the well, one thing that did happen is I got up in the night uh, to go to the to have a little whiz and uh, put my head torch on and just in front of my rods in the lake at the minute is like a few small fry and they were all up on the surface with their tails up in the air literally heads down like almost like looking like they were being dragged up just I don't know if that was to do with the air pressure or something but they, there was loads of them um, so yes yeah, so that was a bit odd um, but other than that, I've not had a, like I'm fishing, you know, fishing for liners. I've not had a single liner, nothing's shown. Um, I was contemplating on having a move as well, but the lake's actually got quite busy now. So all the, um, all the sort of likely areas that I would move to, they're all occupied now, so I can't even move. So yeah, that's that really. I mean, I'm not gonna, uh, not gonna sit here and beat myself up about it. It is, it's just winter fishing. Um, you know, yeah, it's great when the weather's good and you've got like a nice low pressure and a decent southwesterly wind and it's like 13 degrees. But now, I mean, from from three days ago, it's actually um, 16 degrees colder now than three days ago. And the air pressure has gone from um, 984 all the way up to uh, 1,000 and nearly 1,051, uh, which is a record. It's actually broke a record since the 50s or something that I read yesterday. Um, so yeah, so I mean, I was lucky to get these few first fish, fish like at the start of the session. Um, and yeah, I was like optimistic. I thought, oh, we could have a few here, but then just literally it's like sledgehammered the session with the weather. Unfortunately, winter fishing, that is just out of your control. You know, when the weather's good, it's great. And when it's not, it's not so great. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's life, hey ho, we caught a few. I hope you've in, you know, enjoyed this session. It's not been as productive as others, but like I say, that's life. The next one we could go out and catch 20 fish. You just never know with winter fishing. But yeah, so we'll see. We'll give it, we'll give it an hour or so. If not, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna chip off and get a few hours work done this afternoon.